Section 9.1, example 9. Um, let's solve the following system. We have um, three equations and three variables, x, y, and z. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to try to make that triangle. So I'm going to eliminate the x's first. So we'll make a new system. We're going to leave equation 1 as x plus 2y minus 2z equals 1. And I'm going to try to eliminate the x's in equation 2 and equation 3. You could also change the order, if that made sense, but I think in this example, um, the single x will be easy to multiply and get rid of in equation 2 and equation 3. So for equation 2, we'll take equation 2, which is 2x plus 2y minus z equals 6, and to eliminate x, it looks like maybe I could multiply that first equation by negative 2 to get the opposite. So that'll give me negative 2x to eliminate the x's, and I'll just multiply everything else by negative 2. So negative 2 times 2y is negative 4y. Negative 2 times negative 2z will bring me to positive 4z. And then it will equal negative 2 times 1, or negative 2. And so we'll eliminate x, and we'll get negative 2y plus 3z equals 4. That'll be my new E2. So we'll write that over in our system. And then let's do something similar for equation 3, because we want to eliminate the x there as well. So 3x plus 4y minus 3z equals 5. So I could do equation 2, but I'd have to multiply by a fraction to turn 2x into 3x. So equation 3 is 1 is probably easiest. Multiply by negative 3. Right, we're creating opposites. So you don't always have to use the first one. The first one's just easy because we have a single x. So it's easy to multiply. So we'll do negative 3 times equation 1. And we get negative 3x. We get negative 6y because I'm multiplying by negative 3. We get positive 6z equals negative 3. And we'll go ahead and add them. The x's should eliminate. And what do we get? We get negative 2y plus 3z equals 2. And that'll be our new e3. Negative 2y plus 3z equals 2. And we're almost done. Um, I'm still trying to make that triangle, so we have to eliminate the y in that new e3. So we'll take our new e3 negative 2y plus 3z equals 2, and I need to eliminate 2y. So I don't want to use the first equation because that's going to bring x back. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the second equation times a negative 1 to make opposites for the y. So minus, two e, minus e2, not 2e2. So negative times this whole equation, we get positive 2y, negative 3z, and then we get negative 4. And we did that so that the y's eliminate. And then we get 0z equals negative 2. So my new system is x plus 2y minus 2z equals 1. We haven't touched the first one. The second one is negative 2y plus 3z equals 4. And then my new e3 is 0z equals negative 2. Meaning, does 0 ever equal negative 2? No, this is never possible, so we'll say this is a no solution. So there is no solution that will make this work. So this could be that parallel case. It could also be that two of them cross, but the third one never crosses. Uh, but there's no possible solution here. So let's try one more, again, with that triangle method. So example 10, um, we have x minus y plus 5z equals negative 2. Um, 2x plus y plus 4z is 2. And then 2x plus 4y minus 2z is 8. So again, you could change the order if you wanted to. Um, I don't know that we need to. I only really change the order if the first one just has kind of ugly coefficients. But the first one seems okay. So we're going to try to eliminate the x's in the second two. So we could probably multiply the first one by negative 2 in both of these cases, again, to create opposites. So let's start with e2. 
2x plus y plus 4z equals 2. And then I'm going to... I'm going to actually, let's subtract the third one just to change it up. So let's do minus E3. You don't always have to use the first one. And so E3 is 2x, so negative E3 is minus 2x. We get minus 4y. We get positive 2z. And then we get equals negative 8. Just multiplying this whole thing by the opposite. So we'll go ahead and combine and eliminate those x's. So we get y minus 4y is negative 3y plus 6z. And then we get negative 6. So that'll be my new e2. So e1 is still x minus y plus 5z equals negative 2. e2 is now minus 3y plus 6z equals negative 6. And now we need to find a new E3. So E3, I don't want to do minus E2, because um, then it's just basically the same thing. Let's do something different. So let's do minus 2 times the first equation, just to do something different than last time. So there's often more than one way to do these, um, as long as you're eliminating variables. So E3 is 2x plus 4y minus 2z equals 8. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply that first equation by negative 2 so that the x's eliminate. So minus 2x plus 2y minus 10z equals positive 4. And we'll go ahead and add them. Hopefully those x's eliminate, and they do. If they don't eliminate, then maybe you multiplied incorrectly or chose the wrong coefficient. And we get 6y minus 12z equals 12 for our new E3. And so we have our system. And then it looks like maybe I have one more round, right? Let's try to eliminate the y in that final equation. So to eliminate the y, um, let's see, we'll take E3, which is 6y minus 12z equals 12. And then it looks like maybe I could multiply equation 2 by positive 2 to e2. So it's negative 3y becomes negative 6y. 6z becomes 12z, because I'm just doubling everything. And then it would be equal to negative 12. And so those y's should eliminate. The z's happen to also eliminate, so we get 0z equals 0. So let's go ahead and write our new system. So equation one, untouched. Equation two, untouched. Just copy those same equations down. And our new equation three is zero z equals zero. And we finally have the triangle. So the goal is to get to the triangle. So zero z equals zero means anything works. It's different than the previous one because zero can equal zero, but zero can't equal negative two. So that means z is arbitrary. It means z can be anything. And we'll call that alpha. And then we'll just rewrite um, x and y in terms of z. So we'll just back sub to do that, just like we would do if we were regular with a regular equation. So we'll start with equation 2 to solve for y. Let's just go over here and write more space. So negative 3y plus 6z equals negative 6. So negative 3y equals negative 6 minus 6. And then we'll divide everything by negative 3. So y is 2z plus 2. And then we said z is alpha, so y is 2 alpha plus 2. And then let's find x. So I'll use the first equation, x minus y. Plus 5z equals negative 2. 
So x equals y minus 5z minus 2. And then we'll just plug it in y and z to find x. So x equals 2 alpha plus 2 for y minus 5 times alpha for z minus 2. So the 2's cancel out and we get 2 alpha minus 5 alpha, so we get uh, negative 3 alpha. And so we have infinite solutions. Um, that doesn't mean absolutely anything. It's infinite solutions that fit this pattern. So we'll choose different values for alpha. And then we can find all the solutions. So infinite solutions that fit the pattern. Negative 3 alpha, 2 alpha plus 2, and alpha. And if you wanted to test some solutions, you just plug in values for alpha. So what are some solutions? So let alpha equal 0. Then we have negative 3 alpha is 0, 2 alpha plus 2 is 2, and then alpha is 0. So that means 0 to 0 is a solution. Um, let alpha equal 1. So I'm just going to plug in 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. 2 times 1 plus 2 is 4. And then 1 is a solution. And you could keep going and going. But this will hopefully just give you an idea of what these solutions represent.